Welcome to Washington. I'm Shannon Bream in for Brett Baer. Leave it to a man with his own 757 airplane to try to cut a deal on a new version of Air Force One. President-elect Donald Trump met today with the makers of the presidential plane and the military's newest war plane to see if he could cut costs that he said are out of control. Correspondent Peter Ducey has the latest tonight from the Trump compound in Florida. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Shannon. The current president once famously talked about getting things done with a pen and a phone. And now we're seeing the next president get things done with a Twitter account because he sat down tonight with the CEOs of two companies that he recently called out on social media, Boeing and Lockheed Martin. And he appears to have even gotten a concession already from Boeing, which he had targeted because Mr. Trump accused them of going way over budget on the next Air Force One. Trump said he was concerned the price tag for two planes had ballooned to more than Four billion dollars, but at Mar-a-Lago, he was assured it won't cost that much. We're going to get it done for less than that, and and we're committed to working together to make sure that happens. And uh, I was able to give the president-elect my uh, personal commitment on behalf of the Boeing company. Lockheed Martin, meanwhile, manufactures the famously expensive F-35 military aircraft, which Mr. Trump reamed while talking about how he plans to cut costs at the Pentagon. And he said he's still working on lowering that price tag. It's a little bit of a dance. But we're going to get the cost down and we're going to get it done beautifully. And these are great people. And these are amazing people. And your conversation with Boeing. I'm very impressed with them. And good negotiators, too. So whatever ends up happening there, the one certainty during the transition appears to be that tweets are bringing people to the table. We've seen Mr. Trump do it with an air conditioning company, and now we've seen him do it with two airplane companies. Shannon. Well, Peter, I know the president-elect also talked about the terror attack in Germany today as well. Right. The theme of the day here at Mar-a-Lago was national security, not just reducing the costs of defense, but also reducing threats from terrorists. The president-elect met with Pentagon brass in Palm Beach today to receive a presidential daily briefing and spoke for the first time about the deadly terrorist truck attack in Berlin. It's not an attack on humanity. That's what it is. It's an attack on humanity. And it's got to be stopped. Mr. Trump also offered this when asked if he now plans to revisit a campaign pledge to ban Muslims entering the U.S. You know my plans all along that it's been proven to be right. 100% correct. The president-elect also has a message for Democrats, still upset he didn't win the popular vote. He says he could have if that was the way to get elected. In a series of tweets, at real Donald Trump posted, quote, campaigning to win the electoral college is much more difficult and sophisticated than the popular vote. Hillary focused on the wrong states. I would have done even better in the election if that is possible if the winner was based on popular vote but would campaign differently. I have not heard any of the pundits or commentators discussing the fact that I spent far less money on the win than Hillary on the loss. Politico is reporting that officials are now exploring different kinds of discretionary trusts to help the businessman turned president-elect avoid conflicts of interest from the Oval Office, something former House Speaker Newt Gingrich says Trump should do, even though, according to Gingrich, Trump no longer likes to use the term drain the swamp. He has to understand and his family has to understand Understand that there is a public interest which transcends them. At the same time, we have to understand that this is a new situation we've never seen before, and the rules were written for people who are dramatically less successful literally do not work. With 30 days till the inauguration, a new leading contender to become Veterans Affairs Secretary has emerged. It's Cleveland Clinic CEO Dr. Toby Cosgrove, who sources say impressed Mr. Trump during his Tuesday visit to Mar-a-Lago. And insiders say there's a reason it's taking so long to fill this particular cabinet slot. The issue is, is there somebody, number one, who could be a good manager of the good hospitals that exist, because there are good VA hospitals, and is there someone who has the courage to fight what's going to be a tough battle? Which is, the, you would think it'd be easy to give a veteran a card and then he can go to Mount Sinai Hospital but or he'd go to New York Hospital or some other hospital. Uh, the union pressure against that is enormous. This afternoon, Mr. Trump named billionaire investor Carl Icahn a special advisor to the president on regulatory reform. Icahn said in a statement tonight he thinks regulations and all the paperwork that comes with them really slow growth, so he wants to cut a lot of it out. He thinks it'll create a lot of jobs. Shannon? All right, a busy day at Mar-a-Lago. Peter, thank you very much.